Hello, my name is Caroline and thanks for joining me today. Today's video is going to be all about the Raspberry Pi, not the kind you eat. Rather, the single board computer called the Raspberry Pi. There are three types of Raspberry Pis I'm gonna talk about in this video. And I'm going to talk about the Raspbian operating system, how to load the Raspbian operating system onto your Raspberry Pi. And last but not least, I'm gonna talk about the Raspberry Pi camera and how you attach that. I see a lot of applications out there. This is a basic setup video and we will be using this in future videos where I talk about applications that you can load on your Raspberry Pi. So we're not going to load applications today on the Raspberry Pi, just to clarify, this is a fresh setup, brand new Raspberry Pi. Now let's get started. Now let's start by talking about the different kind of Raspberry Pis that are available today. And this is just what I've seen and what I personally own for Raspberry Pis. Number one is the Raspberry Pi 3B or 3B Plus. Now this is the flagship device for Raspberry Pi. This has four USB ports. It's got an ethernet port in case you don't want to do wireless. It does have wireless internet capabilities and it's got a full size HDMI port here. That way you can connect your HDMI monitor directly into your Raspberry Pi. It's got a sound output jack and it's got a power micro USB power connection here. And then it's got a place for you to connect your camera. If you're using a Raspberry Pi camera with the cable, you would connect your camera here. Generally speaking, when you buy a Raspberry Pi camera, it comes with one of these ribbons, uh, which is a connection ribbon. Now let's connect our Raspberry Pi camera to our Raspberry Pi. We'll be using a ribbon cable and you'll see that there is a connection side, the shiny silver side, and then there's a blue side on each end of the, the cable. And it doesn't matter which end you put into the Raspberry Pi, but it does matter which way the ribbon cable faces. Let's start with the Raspberry Pi camera. We'll flip it over and you'll see there is this black piece that you'll pull out with your fingers and this opens up the slot. Now you want to have the silver side facing down, the blue side facing up. You want to insert it into that slot and then you want to push back in the black holding piece and then just give it a gentle tug and this is what it should look like so it shouldn't fall out anymore and it should be perfectly aligned flush and that is the camera section now let's go to the raspberry pi now the connection is right here between your 3.5 millimeter speaker jack and your hdmi cable let's pull this up just as you did with the other one it creates a little slot and then the silver side will go facing the hdmi port then you push the ribbon cable down and then you push the black holding piece down gentle tug once again and it should be connected and the blue side faces the 3.5 millimeter speaker jack and that is how you attach your raspberry pi camera with a ribbon cable to your raspberry pi this is generally if you are doing a camera type project with your raspberry pi generally speaking it's usually using one of these cameras I've also done a lot of videos where I just used a webcam instead and plugged it into one of these USB ports here. So that's the Raspberry Pi 3 or 3B Plus. They're really, really similar. Now let's move on to the Raspberry Pi 3A. This actually came out after the 3B and 3B Plus. And the main difference for the A is that it only has one USB port instead of four USB ports. Why is this important? Why am I mentioning this? It's important to me because for a basic set for Raspberry Pi, I always want to connect my keyboard and mouse. Now, if you have, you know, one USB for your keyboard and one USB for your mouse, then you need two USB ports or you need a, some sort of hub for USB. And that's so easy. You don't need all that for a Raspberry Pi 3B or 3B Plus, but for an A, because it only has one USB port, then you're going to need one of these combo kits like what I have where it's a mouse and a keyboard and one dongle. That's how I would have input capabilities into my Raspberry Pi. I believe that the RAM is also half as much on an A versus a B, but it does have the same full-size HDMI port. Now, why is that important? Well, 
it's important because we're going to move on to the Raspberry Pi Zero W next. Now, there are two Raspberry Pi Zeros out there today. This is a Zero W. There's also a Raspberry Pi Zero. What's the difference? The letter W. What does W stand for? It stands for wireless. Now, I have never owned a Raspberry Pi Zero that wasn't wireless because I honestly don't know how to connect it otherwise. It's much easier just to buy the Zero W that has wireless connectivity to it. It also has a port to connect your camera. So as I showed earlier, there is a Raspberry Pi camera you can purchase. It comes with this cable, which is a standard cable for a Raspberry Pi 3B or 3B plus or A. It does not work with a zero. You will have to buy a separate cable if you want to connect your Raspberry Pi camera to your Raspberry Pi Zero W. And the way you know the difference is that the regular camera cable, the two ends are the same size at the end. For a W zero, one end is going to be smaller than the other end right here. And the narrower end is going to connect into your zero W and it snaps right in and then and then you would connect the wider end to your camera. The other thing about the Zero W is that it has a mini HDMI port, which means that you'll need an adapter to connect to a screen, an HDMI screen. So you'll need this micro to HDMI converter that you'll plug in, then you can plug in your regular HDMI. And then there's power right here. And then last but not least, there is a micro USB port. So all of the other devices I showed you, they have regular size USB ports so that you can connect your keyboard and mouse. This one only has one USB port, but it is a micro USB port. And therefore you need something called a micro USB to USB converter. And you would plug that in and then you could plug in your dongle for your keyboard and mouse. So I do get a lot of questions on my channel of you know, where I do a project with the three and they say, hey, can I use a zero instead? And generally speaking, I would say no, because the processing power of this little zero W is really, really slow. Every time I, you are, I am going to load the same operating system, the Raspbian operating system on all three devices. It works the fastest on this one, which is not exactly lightning speed. I mean, my computer works a lot faster. And then when you get down to the zero, it is significantly slower than what you saw on the three. It is important to consider what your application is, what you're doing, and then deciding which device you need to put it on in order for your project to work properly. Turning on the Raspberry Pi Zero W just to power it up and get Raspbian going is going to take twice, if not three to five times longer than it does on a Raspberry Pi 3B. If you're just using a regular computer, your computer's probably going to load up faster than a 3B. But this is a um, great development tool. This is something that's kind of hard to mess up. Essentially what we do is we use something called a micro SD card and you can buy these for cameras. You know, this is a very common thing. I've got a collection of about 10 of them right now. I do separate projects and it acts like your hard drive for your computer. So this is what you're actually loading your Raspbian operating system onto is one of these little micro SD cards and then you need to insert it into your Raspberry Pi. So if this is for the 3B or 3B plus, this is how you would insert it. And then for the A, it's a very similar spot right here. You would go put it in here. And then for the zero W, similar slot. It only fits in one way, so it's kind of hard to mess up, but I've talked about the differences between the three kinds of Raspberry Pis out there now. I think there was a Raspberry 2 or Raspberry 1 before all of this, and I think there's a Raspberry 4 coming out sometime in the near future. As of the recording of this video, it is not out yet, so I'm just covering the 3 and the 0 W in this video. Next, we're going to move on, and I'm going to show you how to get started with a setup a basic setup for the Raspberry Pi. I am gonna use the 3B Plus as my sample here because this is what I'm gonna use for future videos, number one, and number two, because it is the one that's gonna load the quickest. And on my computer, I am going to start with raspberrypi.org. Now, this is the site where you can buy a Raspberry Pi, where you can learn more about Raspberry Pis, 
and most importantly where you can download the operating system for your Raspberry Pi. Now a side note about this, if you buy, and I'm going to link to this below, I think it's easiest if you're brand new to Raspberry Pi is to buy a kit because a kit is going to come with your micro SD card, it's going to come with a little converter thing, it's going to um, come with a case and stuff so I highly recommend that that's what I'm going to uh, link to in the description below if you'd like to buy one now mine came with a pre-formatted micro SD card and it's called Nobs N-O-O-B-S and if you buy the kit it comes with Nobs installed on your micro SD card and getting started is as simple as plugging in your micro SD card plugging in your Raspberry Pi to your HDMI monitor, plugging in your, your keyboard and mouse, and powering this thing up, and then it will walk you through setting up the Raspbian operating system. It's perfect. It is great for a first timer. Now, I'm putting together this video because after that first initial involvement, you're going to want to reformat another micro SD card and start a new project on your Raspberry Pi. And that's where, that's the kind of boat I found myself in after doing my first project. I couldn't just do one. And then it was easier for me to buy a few micro SD cards, format them all on my own, and then be able to do more projects with the same Raspberry Pi I bought originally. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. We're going to go to raspberrypi.org. We're going to go to downloads. And there is the Nobs download here. That came pre-installed on, in, if you buy the kit, I don't use that anymore. I prefer to just download the full Raspbian operating system. I'm gonna click on Raspbian. And then from here, there you have different choices of which Raspbian version you want to download. The first one is Raspbian Stretch with desktop and recommended software. I downloaded this once. It's a really huge file, it's even bigger than the one I'm going to download and then it didn't quite work for some of the stuff I was doing so I've kind of quit using this one. I actually prefer Raspbian Stretch with desktop here and you just click download zip. That's what I'm going to do. Depending on your network connection it could take 15, 20 minutes or even longer to download this zip file. It is a huge zip file. I will um, warn you about that now. And last but not least is something called Raspbian Stretch Lite. I have tested this out, I have tried it out. I don't recommend Lite because when you get it installed on your Raspberry Pi, it's just gonna be a, a terminal, that's all it is. So unless you were the Linux administrator in your company in your last position, I don't recommend this. This is fully terminal commands only, there's no more desktop. I don't recommend Stretch Lite for the average newbie user. I recommend Raspbian Stretch with desktop. As I've been talking here, it says I've got 11 minutes left on this download. Um, so as we're waiting for that download, I wanna also point out to you resources where you can learn more about Raspberry Pi. Uh, so here we have hackster.io Raspberry Pi. Uh, so hackster.io, you know, you can submit your Raspberry Pi project or you can look at other people's Raspberry Pi project. You can sign up for an account Signing up for an account is free, and then you can get a daily email about the newest, latest Raspberry Pi projects posted on hackster.io. I've learned a lot from this website. This is great. Uh, Adafruit also has a Raspberry Pi channel. They also have a lot of projects that they'll feature on their website. And last but not least, good old Amazon. If you want to get a book about Raspberry Pi and read it, I recommend you go to Amazon and search for Raspberry Pi Beginner's Guide, User's Guide, Setup Guide. I just typed in Raspberry Pi Guide here and this is what came up. I can't recommend a specific book. I haven't read any of these books quite honestly. If you don't have money to buy a book, that's okay. I'd recommend going to your local library and trying to check out a book about the Raspberry Pi if that is your medium for learning. And of course YouTube. There's tons of resources tons of videos on YouTube for Raspberry Pi as well. And now I'm going to complete my download of the Raspbian system and in order to install it onto my computer the next thing I need to do is download something called Etcher. Now I think Etcher just had uh, rebranding or they were bought by another company now it's called Belina Etcher. I will link to this below it's uh, belina.io forward slash etcher or you can just type in etcher.io and then you will need to download an application for your computer install it on your computer and that's how we're going to get Raspbian loaded onto our micro SD card. I already have etcher loaded onto my computer I will just uh, fire it up right here 
and this is etcher now the next thing i need to do is get out my rico sd card and now here comes the basic setup for the raspbian operating system i've got a brand new micro sd card i'm going to insert that into my sd card adapter uh, now there are more than one ways of doing this but essentially you need to get your micro sd card inserted into your computer and i've got a slot right here on the side of my computer that it goes in and then on my computer it recognizes that a micro sd card or an sd card has been inserted into my computer and then next i will hit select image now i'm going to select the image of the latest raspbian system i just downloaded now do keep in mind they do update these every couple of months depending on you know how their operating system is going uh, next you want to select your micro sd card now if you have a larger hard drive external hard drive connected to your computer obviously you don't want to select that you want to make sure that you are selecting the micro sd card you just inserted into your computer now I'm, I've confirmed that and then last but not least you want to hit flash and if you do have a Mac like I do you will need to type in your password to make sure it's really you and then we will wait for this to flash so this will take a while generally speaking it would take 10 to anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes to flash your micro SD card I will be right back And now our micro SD card is done flashing and it says flash complete on my laptop here. And I'm gonna close that out and I can simply remove the micro SD card from my laptop computer. It's in a little sleeve. I'll remove it from the sleeve as well. And then all we need to do inserting into my Raspberry Pi right now. Next, I need to connect the HDMI cable. I'm using this little HDMI monitor here. This is uh, quite handy. And then I also need to connect my uh, keyboard and my mouse into one of the four USB ports here. And last but not least, I need to power this up. And this is the power cord. And here's where you plug it in on your Raspberry Pi. I'm going to now see my uh, screen come up here and I've got my screen turned around onto my other camera and you're gonna see the Raspbian system come to life for the first time on this computer and now it's gonna walk us through a setup menu of the Raspbian system I'll start by hitting next and then it's gonna ask me United Kingdom I'm in the US I'm gonna say United States I'm gonna say American English and I'm going to select New York I'm also going to select US keyboard is a little check right there. Now this does change from time to time because they do upgrades of the system all the time. So if your screen doesn't match exactly as it is, keep in mind it is a welcome wizard. It is a setup wizard and just please just go with the flow. Next, it wants you to change the password. The default password on a fresh install of Raspberry Pi is Raspberry and they want you to change it to something else. Uh, that is if, if you need to SSH into your Raspberry Pi later on, they want you to set up a password. It is not a password. Generally speaking, it's not a password that is, they're gonna ask you for when you log in to the actual device itself. It's generally something that you'll need if you're gonna remote access your Raspberry Pi, which is very common. And I'm going to hit next. Now we're going to set up the screen. Uh, this is actually a new screen that they have just included in this latest version of Raspbian. I'm gonna hit next to set it up. Now I wanna get connected to the Wi-Fi here and that is just a normal SSID Wi-Fi connection. You select your Wi-Fi SSID and then you'll type in your password. And now I'm connected to the Wi-Fi on my Raspberry Pi on this Raspbian OS system and now it's going to look for updates and I'm gonna hit next. As it looks for updates, depending on how many updates have been released since you downloaded Raspbian, this could take a while. I've seen it take anywhere from five minutes to an hour. I will be right back. And now we can see that our system is up to date. We've downloaded the latest updates and we're gonna click OK and I'll probably reboot. And there's the restart screen, hit restart. And then we will get our Raspberry Pi restarted and we'll be ready to rock and roll with our new Raspberry Pi. Now we have our Raspberry Pi up and working with the Raspbian operating system. This is what it looks like right out of a brand new install. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a terminal. And the way you access the terminal is by clicking the little terminal button right here. And it opens right up. 
And I'm going to do, this is part of the setup that I usually do is sudo raspi-config. And then you're, you're gonna get some menu options there and you can kind of arrow down and up in order to select these menu options. Um, number one, I'm gonna show you the camera. Now, I've seen a lot of Raspberry Pi projects out there with that Raspberry Pi camera. In order for the camera to work, you do need to enable the camera setup in this menu here. Select interfacing options. I just arrow down to interfacing options and I hit enter and then the camera is number one. I'm gonna hit enter and then it says, do you want to enable your camera? Why? Why, yes I do. I'm gonna hit the tab button to get it over to the yes. Then I'm gonna hit the enter button and then it's gonna say I've enabled the camera and I'm gonna hit okay and that's the camera. The next thing I usually enable is SSH. That is a secure shell. That is if you are taking another computer such as this laptop here and you are going to SSH in to your computer. I'm selecting interfacing options, number five, arrow down to it, and then arrow down to SSH, enter to enter SSH, tab to say yes, enter, and I am now enabling SSH on my computer, enter, and then back to interfacing options, enter, and now I'm selecting VNC, arrow down to VNC, hit enter, tab to enable VNC, enter, and now I'm gonna hit enter, yes, I want to enable VNC. Now, what is VNC, what is SSH? Let me give you a quick tutorial here. I suggest exploring this on your own. This is not going to be a comprehensive SSH VNC into your computer. I am done with this menu. I'm gonna hit tab to get to the exit button. Hit enter, and then it's probably gonna to wanna to reboot. Yes, I wanna reboot, enter. I'm gonna wait for a minute for it to reboot. Now, VNC was the third thing I enabled in the interfacing options menu of the sudo raspi config on my Raspberry Pi. Okay, I see my Raspberry Pi is now rebooted and I am on the website realvnc.com and I'm on the download page. I will link to this below. I got to this by just Google searching VNC viewer. I want to view VNC and it's, it's a free download. It's right here. You wanna download the VNC viewer, install it onto your desktop like a regular application on your computer. And so I already have it loaded onto my computer. So all I have to do is hit VNC viewer a big note about connecting using VNC, this has to be on your internal networks. Both your laptop that you're using to VNC and your Raspberry Pi need to be on the same network. Now on the Raspberry Pi, all I need is my internal IP address. How do I get that? I'm gonna go back to my terminal, click on terminal here. As I said earlier, you've got to get comfortable with terminal commands in this. So I'm gonna type in ifconfig and that should give me my internal IP address. And now I've got the internal IP address of my Raspberry Pi, 192.168.1.38, 192.168.1.38. And uh, since I've connected to this before, it's going to give me, and if you get this error message, uh, this is a, this means that my Raspberry Pi has been on this network previously and now it's a different SD card, micro SD card, and it has noticed that if I'm doing something nefarious or if something else is trying to access your network, this is an error check for that sort of thing. I, I, I know that I'm trying to access my own Raspberry Pi in, within my own network, so that is perfectly fine. I'm going to hit continue and then the username should be pi, and then the password is the password we set up in that setup wizard I just did a few minutes ago. And there we go. I can now see, view, change my desktop on my Raspberry Pi over here on my computer. And so I see that I, I can see my internal IP address. I'm gonna close this out at this point, and we're gonna get more into the GUI interface at this point. This is a little bit similar to Windows is how I would uh, phrase this because there is this Raspberry right here, like there used to be a little Windows back in the day. You click on it, there's a drop down, and you can see what came with your Raspberry Pi just out of the box. Um, a lot of people use Raspberry Pis to learn how to program. Uh, so if you are a Python programmer, this is 
it comes preloaded with a Python compiler, then there's Genie, and then for internet there is a default web browser, Chromium, so I use this all of the time. And then sound and video, there's a media player here. You can view images, if you have a JPEG you want to view, this is it, and then under accessories you've got a calculator, file manager, um, task manager, so if you, you're running too many programs at the same time you, and you need to close something, there's task, ma task manager, terminal, you're going to be you're going to have to use a terminal uh, and then text editor. And then of course there are preferences, add remove software, appearance, audio device settings, um, and then configuration. So you can go through this on your own. I'd recommend you do that. And then this is Chromium. I'm going to not sign into Chromium, but from Chromium you can go to hack Stir.io, just as an example. There is a version of Adobe Flash Player on this Raspberry Pi. Let's go to raspberrypi.org. You can view the Raspberry Pi. So this computer is not quite as fast as maybe your laptop computer, but it is a great $35 to $40 computer that you can buy and have a lot of fun with at home. And this is the Raspberry Pi website. And you can check out the tutorials, you know, Hackster, same thing. You can check out tutorials on Hackster and Adafruit. Um, and then File Manager, I think that's important. You can click this button for File Manager. And just like on your Windows or your Mac desktop, you can see the different files. You can get to the different files and folders as you do and that will be important as you do more projects you know where you want to save things you save things just like a file manager in windows this is a lot of fun that comes straight out of the box a lot of functionality for you to start coding i do want to cover ssh before i go and my raspberry pi is still up and running this is my desktop on my regular computer i use a mac so to me it's a little bit easier to do this on a mac on a windows machine you'd download an application called PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y. I'll link to that below. On a Mac, you don't need to download any special software. It comes right out of the box for a Mac user. So you go to Launchpad and you are now looking for Terminal. And once again, get comfortable with your Terminal commands. Now, let's see, we've got a, it pulls up a Terminal and now I can SSH uh, into my Raspberry Pi and run a few commands. So I'm going to type in SSH pi at and the internal IP address 192.168.1. And yes, I want to continue connecting. Password is the password I set up when I did the setup wizard on the Raspberry Pi. And here I am. I am now on this Raspberry Pi and I can do an LS and look at the different folders, CD into desktop and there are, there's nothing in the desktop and I can go back one that CD space dot dot um, and then you can sudo raspy config okay, and then that is how we get back into the interfacing options I just showed you I'm going to not make any changes hit finish uh, but once again this is if you're just doing terminal commands this is a fast way of, of getting to your Raspberry Pi from your regular computer a lot of tutorials I've seen out there do use this method I do recommend learning how to SSH I will link to some SSH tutorials or, or some resources below somewhere but this is kind of the gist of SSH is know your terminal commands don't forget your password for your Raspberry Pi if you forget your password it's not the end of the world quite honestly Honestly, because what you can do is you can just always just reflash your micro SD card to start over again hopefully you didn't have your trade company secrets on there or you know this the secret recipe of something but I just recommend just remember your password that you set up when you set up your Raspberry Pi that was a quick overview of SSH thank you so much for joining me for this video please do subscribe I will be referring to this video in future videos when we talk about setting up a Raspberry Pi on the Raspbian operating system from this point, you can either follow one of my other videos on this channel. There are plenty of other videos from other creators on YouTube. I highly recommend checking them out as well. Uh, I hope you found this useful. We, we set up a Raspberry Pi and we've got the basic Raspbian operating system loaded. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you on future videos. Bye now.